Uh, this is a case which came to our lab. It's a 45 year old with an endometrial tumor. It is more of a curating sample. So I've taken bits and pieces of images, uh, whichever I felt it was representative. I want you guys to comment. I'll show the images. I'll definitely comment about the description of the image also. But if you're listening to this video, hit a pause button now and then please comment yourself, then listen to my discussion, right? So this was the image. Okay, so how to describe this uh, thing is definitely you have more cellular. It's a very low power image, scanner view image, right? So you have lots of uh, tissue here interspersed with areas of hemorrhage. That's the only thing which I can say from here. If you can bit more concentrate, actually, actually you can see a little bit of papillary areas, right? Even in a low power image, you can see a little bit of papillary areas. You can see a big vessel here and there's a fibrovascular area with lots of papillary projections, right? So what you're primarily seeing in these images, papillary areas admixed with areas of hemorrhage and most likely they are going to be tumor only because even in this power, the blue color is a little bit more prominently seen. That kind of tells me I'm dealing with a neoplastic condition, right? Let's go to zoom into higher power and see what we exactly are. Let's see if whatever we projected is right. Perfect, right? If you look at this image, if you want to zoom this image for you, can I say that definitely I'm having papillary here? Yes, definitely I'm having papillary fronts, right? So like previous time itself, I told you, whenever you see papillae, please don't jump into your serious carcinoma for diagnosis. Because papillae can be seen in multiple places, including papillary syncytial metaplasia. That also can have papillae. Papillary proliferative of endometrium, we saw them in endometrial hyperplasia, can have papillae, right? There are lots of places where you have papillae. Even in your willow glandular adenocarcinoma, you have papillae. Here also I'm having papillae. I told there in the previous module discussion, when you have papillae within grade three nuclei, think of a serious tumor, right? Now let's look at the nuclei here. Can I say it's pleomorphic? It is, look at these nuclei, definitely pleomorphic, right? Definitely pleomorphic. But maybe I can say it's hyperchromatic. It's not like a vesicular nuclei with a prominent nuclei. Serious customers almost always have a vesicular nuclei, prominent nuclei, a grade three nuclear finding, right? Here I might not put it as grade one. They're not elongated. They are oval drawn pleomorphism. Maybe I'll put it as a grade two nuclei if at all I have to, right? So yes, it's having a little bit amount of nuclear pleomorphism for sure. So I'm thinking in terms of carcinoma. Is it serious carcinoma, right? There's one point for me here exactly in this tumor, which is against my serious carcinomas. If you look at the core of the papillae, right? Wherever you see the papillae, you're seeing papillae, lots of them here, the core, here, the core, here, the core, here, the core. You do have blood vessels. See, you have blood vessels for sure. That's, that's not a concern at all. In addition to the blood vessels, the core is extremely hyalinized. This is a very important finding for me. An extremely high analyzed course is a characteristic finding for one tumor. In addition to that, I have a few other findings as well. I'll come to that finding very soon, right? When you see a papillary tumor, very thin slender papillae, low degree pleomorphism, below glandular adenocastomas, if, if it's a cancer. Stout papillae with more of vascularity, less of high analyzed score, grade three nuclear serious carcinoma. Stout papillae, short, these are short and stout papillae only, right? maybe grade two or grade three nuclei with an hyalinized core, very, very important, right? This core hyalinization, maybe even here, look at it. It's extremely hyalinized core, right? Wherever you see the core, it's extremely hyalinized. Hyalinized core is very characteristic of one tumor. We'll talk about the tumor soon. Now, grossly, I know it's a hyalinized tumor, a papillary core, right? Now I have to go into the cellular architecture or the cytological feature of the cancer, right? We already saw about the nuclear feature. We decided, we concluded it's a grade two nuclei, most probably, right? Go to another image. I'm zooming in again. If you look at the cytoplasm, there are a few things which are characteristic here. One, obviously, the pink color cytoplasm, right? That's there for sure. Serious carcinoma also will have a cytoplasm. That's how it's going to be. In addition to the pink color cytoplasm, if you see here, in lots of places you have, there's a cell, there's a cell, there's a cell. Lots of places you have, perfect, you have clear areas, right? So there are two types of cytoplasm here. I do have, I do agree that there's lots of eosinophilic cytoplasm. At the same time, I do have lots and lots of clear areas as well, right? So that's my cytoplasmic architecture. Even in low power, you can see lots of clear areas, right? So clear and eosinophilic area of cytoplasm or eosinophilic cytoplasm is again a characteristic finding of a tumor, which I'm going to discuss. There's one more characteristic finding, which we saw in the previous image itself. I didn't focus on that. I'll take the same image and we'll refocus on that, right? If you look at this cell, see, this is a papillae, right? This is a papillae which you're talking about. This is a papillae which you're talking about, right? That's a papillae, right? Maybe I'll use an yellow color so that it's contrastingly easy for us to remember, right? That's a papillae, right? If you look at the lining cell of the papillae, apart from the cytological architecture, can I say it kind of has a hobnailing appearance? It does, right? So hobnailing means if this is your cell, it projects like this. The nucleus will be here. That's an hobnail appearance. If you look at this, projecting hobnail, right? Most of them look at beautiful hobnailing, right? 
So this hobnailing is also characteristic of this lesion, fine? This hobnailing is there. Wherever, uh, quite a few places you see hobnailing. Here, look at this. these are beautiful hobnails, right? They are projecting. When the nucleus projects outside and kind of like falling outside, you call it a hobnailing nucleus. This is how a hobnailing nucleus looks, right? Hobnailing, clear eosinophilic cytoplasm, papillary pattern, high nest core are diagnostic of one tumor, which is clear cell carcinoma. Be it an ovary, be it an endometrium, be it anywhere in the external genitalia, it will be the same. Cervix can also have clay cell carcinoma, you go, your ovary can also have clay cell carcinoma. All of them will have the same findings. I will not repeat them there. Marker same, everything is the same, right? So what WHO talks about is when you have these patterns, suspect a clay cell carcinoma. Don't go for papillary. Always papillary doesn't mean it's serious carcinoma. I do have differential diagnosis. Look at every feature, then call it serious carcinoma, right? You have solid areas. Again, when you have a solid area, what gives me uh, the difference between solid area of this and a solid area of an endometroid or a serous tumor is the cytoplasm color. Eosinophilic clear cytoplasm solid area, go for it. Tubulocystic, microcystic, very classical for this. When you have these classical patterns in union or in mixture, anything is fine. I'll show a tubulocystic, microcystic area. This is from WHO. It's a tubulocystic area, right? This is a tubulocystic area, microcystic area. Look at the color of the cytoplasm. That's more important. Clear to eosinophilic cytoplasm. Diagnostic of a clay cell carcinoma. Again, clay cell carcinoma, I do need a very good suspicion to pick up clay cell carcinoma. At the same time, I also need to confirm the diagnosis, right? I do have IHC for clay cell carcinoma as well. The multiple IHC given in WHO, we have only one IHC which is available in the lab. What we do generally is your uh, napsin A because napsin is available for lung cancers. We do that. There's a napsin A positivity in the same case of a clay cell carcinoma. Uh, HNF, okay, one beta. Hepatocyte nuclear factor, one beta. This is said to be the best IHC, but most of the places might not be available. You can use Napsin A. This is what we rely on in our cases. Napsin A is a good marker. A marker can also be used. This is also positive here, right? As opposed to other tumors, the clear cell custom of endometrium is negative for generally ERPR. May might have focal positivity, but uniform positivity is never possible in a clear cell carcinoma. It's most likely negative. P53 is 50%. This is important. See, because if you have a diagnosis of a clear cell carcinoma versus a serious carcinoma in a microscopy, which you will not, once you see a clear cell carcinoma, you will definitely diagnose clear cell carcinoma, right? If at all you have a diagnosis, I want you to do napsin. P53 might be, might not be. This also might be positive for P53. Doesn't mean that it's only serious carcinoma which is positive. It's a tumor uh, suppressor gene, right? If it's mutated, it's going to be positive. That's all, right? L rely on this. Amacar also might be available in most of the labs uh, because you use for prostate cancer. This, though it's best, it's not available much. There's an uh, Napsin A positivity. It's the same patient, uh, which post surgically we did the Napsin A for omentum. Uh, this is an omental uh, tissue deposit. It's Napsin A positivity, right? So my diagnosis is simple clear cell carcinoma of endometrium. See, I feel that this is the way we have to go forward and read. When you have a common thing, you go with theoretical approach, read everything, how to diagnose them. Like we did for endometroid and serous. After some things which are like 3-4% of the tumor, but yes, it might come in an exam, but I should not miss them. We'll go with case-based approach because that I feel will definitely give you much more confidence. Okay, I have to look for these pointers and go. Because theory exam is not a concern for most of us. Our goal is diagnosis. And I'm sure everyone will be very much worried about a theory exam only in the last three months of your final year of MD pathology, that's all, right? Or DNB pathology, right? So we'll definitely go through it, but our goal is to make you make sure we become the best pathologist in diagnosis. I'll go with case-based approach, and for the commonal thing, I'll definitely go in-depth about the theory, know everything about it, how to differentiate with other mimics, so that we are sorted for life, right?